Isn't the point of Utopia that um, everything is awesome and no longer does anyone have any worries? No, I don't really think that's possible, I'm afraid. See, the issue is that our brains scale our concerns to the, to the, to the size of our mind, if that makes any sense. If, our, if, if we have war and plague and disease to deal with, then it will, those problems will shape themselves to the confines of our mind. And if we have girl problems and, you know, uh, itchy bum, then those problems will scale to the size of our mind. Uh, and that's just how life is. Does that make any sense? Gotta clean your shit. Okay, when I said itchy bum, I meant like the cheek. Not like the... Not the asshole. Wipe your butt cheeks, guys. So with regards to ut utopian society, I don't think that you could ever design a society which would not have people who are, you know, mistreated or or miserable or, you know, this, that, or the other. Um, I, I just think you, you, would, you could, you know, you could design a society where things are still pretty darn good. Vosh, I strongly disagree with your take about conflict slash happiness. For the latter, there's a lot of evidence that happiness can be progressively satiated. Sure, Soaked on left. I mean, I'm not saying, of course, that all people will be equally unhappy no matter what problems they have. I'm saying there can still be difficulties and triumphs and victories and all that fun stuff, you know. Everything that makes, you know, life full of conflict, it will still be present in any utopian society. Because what makes life full of conflict is the fact that we are humans. You know, everything else is just sort of adjacent to that. You can work to make those conflicts less destructive, and I think that's a good thing. If optimistic sci-fi is so important, why are you writing some post-apocalypse superhero military murder story? Has <laughs> hypocrite much destiny was right about you? Well, maybe there is an optimistic bit at the end, huh? You don't know, and also I don't, because I only have the one chapter bit in mind. There was one bit that I didn't mention because I didn't know how much detail I wanted to inject into what I was saying, but I thought sort of a nice thematic juxtaposition, a bit that I have in mind at least, would be, um, you know, er that early on in that bit, when they're riding towards the pickup location to one of those farms with the convoy, that um, that the other man, Adam, the, uh, the other superhero, uh, is bickering a bit with the captain, that they're having a bit of a back and forth, and they're honestly both kind of being cunts about it, you know? Um, there's not, not really even a definitive person who's being good or bad, they're just sort of both being bristly assholes. And, and Eve, the girl, you know, she insists, she insists that her companion, the other superhero, um, essentially shut the fuck up and stop antagonizing the captain. And the guy's like, well, why? You know, we're both being dicks right now. Why do I have to be the one to shut up? You know, he's being a bit petulant about it. And, um, and the girl, I think, would say that the only reason that her companion isn't being shouted at in full is because the captain's afraid of him, and that it's unfair to take advantage of the weakness of humans to get away with being cuntish to them. You know, that they're, 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 they're part of a military detail, and if they were just regular civilians, they wouldn't be able to get, a, get, get away with this. What he's essentially doing is sort of exploiting the fear of, of, of physically inferior people. And then she's the one who does exactly that after killings. Yes, Somnio, yes, exactly. Exactly, because think of it logistically, right? Okay, so she recognizes, you know, that, that they're being given preferential treatment because everyone's afraid that if they snap, they could, you know, whip their arm around and explode somebody's head or something like that. Um, but at the end, you know, she knows that the commander has absolutely no incentive to, to lie in her favor. Even though she was about to be jumped, she was the one who attacked first. Is solar punk utopian or just optimistic? Well, it's considered a utopian aesthetic because it's kind of defined by how pog champion based it is. I mean, it's, you know, I don't know if anything's properly utopian, but it's, it's good. I feel like people could read that as feminist power fantasy. I don't really think it has anything to do with her gender, right? I mean, it would, it would stem purely from the, the physical, you know, the relative physical strength. Because I, I imagine, you know, humans would be quite terrified around superhumans under any context. You'd have to be stupid not to be, you know? Of course it doesn't, but you know Ben Shapiro would be on that shit. Then I'll be sure to compensate for it by having the, sh the shit kicked out of the girl early on, okay? I feel by the time you get to having superhumans, your medical technology is probably advanced enough that you don't worry that much about physical harm. Well, Holtenheim, the point would be that the superhumans come out of fucking nowhere. Basically like 10 years in our future, or sometime around thereabouts, you know? 
So the world is just full of problems, and then all of a sudden, just randomly, you know, uh, uh, okay, a few million people worldwide uh, have. Um, oh, we can't cross this. But I've put a lot of thought into, like, logistically how that stuff would work if there was some kind of cataclysmic social problem, right? I mean, take, for example, you know, if, if, if there was some massive supply chain breakdown. Not what we have right now with COVID, but I mean, like, literally the whole world grinds to a sudden, unexpected, logistically insurmountable halt. I mean, what, like, what, what, do, you, what, do, you, what do you do after that? What's the next? Because the thing is, like, here are some thoughts of mine, at least, right? First of all, at least in a state like California, 90% of people would starve to death very, very quickly. I, I don't know if there's any way of getting around that. With, without, you know, the constant intake of imported, you know, food resources, like, they, it, would, it would just be... Yeah, I, I feel like people would starve very, 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 very quickly. And that would be bad, you know. So there would probably be militia organizations trying to defend the farms in Central California, which would probably immediately start rota rotating, like, essential crops. No more almonds or whatever, but you'd have lots of, like, grain. There'd be very little meat available, you know, because nobody can hunt, you know? The widespread availability of meat back before industrialization, that didn't come from, you know, local meat farms or whatever. That came from hunting. What is there to hunt in Central California? The millions of people who live there? Not a chance. Are you kidding me? Fish, no. Again, I'm talking about California populations. Los Angeles. I mean, if you live in a city, like, right now, just think about, like, if there was no food in any of the grocery stores, and everyone else was in the same position as you, where the fuck would you get your food from? Like, most of, most of you would be dead within a month. That's... Most of us would be. I would be. That's how our supply chain works, you know. Los Angeles isn't central, lol. I'm talking about California broadly. I was just saying that she would be work, like working to protect farms in Central California. The max DoorDash order is a thousand at a time, so I think people would be fine. Thank you. So noted. That's something I like a lot about zombie apocalypse. Well, it's just any supply chain breakdown, really. I think if you had a Desert Eagle or another potent gun, 95% of superhumans could be killed. Probably 99%, right? Or at least how I would write it, right? I mean, if you've got a giant 50 caliber gun, then yeah, you could kill pretty much any one of them. I mean, logistically, though, would you get a chance to? If they're three times as fast as you, I mean, you know, they might get the beat on you well before you get the beat on them. They can draw faster. And depending on the distances involved, they might be able to move faster than they know where the bullet will be, you know? Stuff like that. Pretty difficult to manage. But I do, I do kind of like the idea, though, right? That most military outfits at that point in time would have, like, their anti-super gun or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, it would be, be just be some massive, like... 44 Magnum revolver that they have as a sidearm and don't even keep reloads for in case they just ever come into contact with something that can't be killed with like 9mm. Superhuman vitality, speed, strength, or like super- Okay. Oh god, this is nerdy. Alright, forgive, forgive me all in chat who don't care, okay? The way that I think of it, okay, the thing that, the thing that I think of it, like logistically, right, is that a great many, the vast majority of the people who would be, who would have those abilities would never even know it that they are just slightly stronger or faster than they were before the awakening of all the superhumans. They never really paid much mind to it. Maybe they have their suspicions, but it's it's not something evident or testable. It's just a, it's just, they are a bit stronger, but not in a way which is even remotely relevant to their day-to-day -day life, I guess, except maybe they can haul heavy stuff a little bit easier, right? And then maybe one in 10, of the people who do get powers, uh, they get it to a significant degree, you know? Maybe they're, maybe they're strong enough that a knife held by an ordinary man wouldn't cut unless they were stabbed with great force at point, you know? Or maybe they're fast enough that they can draw a gun very noticeably faster than a regular human. And then you get, you know, progressively stronger and stronger and stronger from there. Um, you mean they have the potential? No, they just are. Just by default. There's no apps. It's essential, at least to me, that there's no merit whatsoever. Nobody trains to be strong. Maybe they train to draw well, or they train to be, you know, to, to perfect their running technique, but their powers are just innate. There's no merit whatsoever to them. So anyway, you have maybe one in ten who are considerably stronger, and then you have the ones like our protagonist, who are even stronger than that, where at great distances, 
our protagonist, uh, nine millimeter bullets will just crash against her skin, you know? That there's essentially no way of physically overcoming her in any kind of melee. That even, even if she was unarmed, and you had a knife or a baseball bat or something. It, it, like, it, would, it would be a guaranteed suicidal uh, effort to, to even attempt to fight her, you know? Um, that smaller ammunition, like 22 LR, I mean, probably couldn't even break her skin at any distance, right? And then I, I imagine there would be rumors, or sometimes sightings, of people who are even stronger than that. Um, People for whom those 44 Magnum revolvers would be reserved. People who, if they showed up, could just cut their way through a city with no real problem. You know, like, like you could, like, any, any small arms fire, you know, anything short of actual munitions would, would be worthless against them. They're fast enough that they could kill you before you knew they were there. Perceptively, they're, they're better than a satellite dish. I mean, they're just, you know, there's no way, no way around it. And that would be the things that people are terrified of. Because, you know, for as long as humans have been around in real human history, you know, social stability has always kind of been predicated on the fact that everyone dies to a blade and a bullet. No matter how talented you are, everyone can be killed, which means that if you want to protect your gold, you hire guards. If you want to protect a convoy, you hire an escort. That's how things have always worked. But now, that doesn't work anymore. Because it's entirely possible that your well-paid, well-armed escort could be annihilated by a person who they never had even a chance at fighting to begin with. And I think that kind of paranoia would foster a tremendous disdain towards these superhumans from the soldiers. But I think it's ultimately the disdain of the oppressed. Because at any point, a sufficiently strong person with those powers could just kill everyone in the room they're in and leave. So so people may hate them, sure, but it's it's impotent hate, you know. It's 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 hate towards the privileged. So the strong skinned wouldn't be able to get surgery or tattoos or piercings, yeah. Are superpowers in this universe limited only to physical abilities or is there more ethereal stuff like telekinesis? Okay, that's the other thing that I meant to say. All superhumans would enjoy some level of relative physical strength, speed, durability, so on, but some of them would get more exotic abilities, right? So the the two the two in the story at least, the man, the man is incredibly perceptive. Like has very very good eyesight. You know, x-ray vision, the whole nine yards. Whereas she has a small amount of exotic metal that appeared around the same time as the superhumans that she can control telekinetically. And that there are people with even more exotic abilities, thermokinesis, and the like. Let's focus more on the game now. Every day when you're walking down the street, everybody that you meet has an original point of view.